Hey y'all, I'm out this bitch, out this bitch, out this bitch, and all that there. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Hey, look, look, check this out, y'all. Good news, good news. I just got a sale notification for one of the stocks that I was selling. Uh, not the all the shares, but just you know, selling part of the stock after it grows. So I can take that part and invest it in something else. And notice that when that sale went through, that after going into my Fidelity portfolio, that I had a $2,000 come up. Hmm, not bad. So, well, what I did was I looked into it. And I thought, well, what do we have here? Hmm, it looks like $2,000. And indeed it was. Yes, it was $2,000. Well, see, I put in about $46 on this one particular stock. And it sat low for more than a year. Uh, time just going by. And I almost kind of lost faith in it. Like the little engine that could. It just didn't give up. This motherfucker come out of nowhere, bam, boom, kaboom, cloud, like the Batman movie or some shit. So I'm kind of happy about that. Yeah, I'm kind of happy. I mean, to put $46 into something and watch it come back, you know, to 2000 and some change at a 4,000% gain overnight, when I have 50 other plus assets in this one portfolio alone that I expect to do the same exact thing, that's when it's just it. Uh, being that they're really highly volatile uh, penny stocks. But, man, I think I have about $2,000 invested in this total portfolio and had a nerve to watch this shit go all the way down to about $400. So it feels kind of good to say that the total amount that I have invested in this whole portfolio while watching it lose go as low as $400. Um, it's good to say that now this portfolio has paid for itself with just one overnight sale. So basically I put in a sale order for $1,500 and decided to keep the other $500 to grow. So technically speaking... My portfolio pays for itself or have paid for itself off of that one sale or came close to paying for itself off that one sale. That $1,500 sale, never to mention that I still would have $500 left in that same asset for that to continuously grow. So I'm just, you know, I'm kind of happy, kind of excited. Had some things going on. I didn't want to pull no money out of any of my portfolios to take care of some things. So seeing this kind of makes me very happy. And to kind of see some of my hard work pay off. I mean, I did a video on, this is probably about a year and a, a year and a half ago, year and ago, year ago. I did a video on just some of the information and notes that I've been taking since my mom died on, you know, trying to understand this, this part of the finance industry and all. And I think back then my books totaled about maybe three or four books. Right now, I have about seven, six or seven books um, with nothing but notes and information and learning and learning and learning. I even have a binder that's got, that's separated. <laughs> Man, yeah, come to think of it, I even have a binder that's separated into different industries and, you know, whether it be metaverse, blockchain, whether it be sports, you know, sports, stock sports and stuff like that and gaming and stuff, cannabis, whatever, different, you know, itemized or whatever. So I've been taking a lot of, a lot, a lot of notes. So it's kind of amazing to see some of it, you know, pay off or whatever. And to know that I wasn't, you know, wrong by some of the decisions I made. Um, to get into this industry. You know, everybody's got their own inspiration for getting into it, but 
my husband's my mom died back in 2020. Let her know that I can take care of myself. And one of the best ways to let her know I can take care of myself is to build my net worth. Um, so that at any given time, if it's something I need or don't have, I can always, you know, liquidate some of my net worth and never be without. And that's the reason why I stepped into the industry after my mom died. So she wouldn't be up there or over there, whatever you want to call it, depending on what you believe. But over there, you know, worrying about, you know, me being able to take care of myself. My car notes paid for. I'm a minimalist. I don't have any bills at all. Um, like gas, stuff like that, you know. But, yeah, I don't really have any bills. And... That's one of the main reasons why I don't have a lot of bills is, again, to let my mom know that I'm I'm able to take care of myself. I got more than what I need and to try to build on that and to also, you know, build some generational wealth and break some of these curses uh, by um, investing in things that are always going to appreciate or will most likely appreciate for more than 20 years, which is pretty much with this stock. Uh, penny stock portfolio is all about this fidelity portfolio. This fidelity portfolio is consisted of nothing but penny stocks and penny stocks alone. Um, or stocks that are not trading on a normal exchange or pink slip penny stocks, you know, even if they're a dollar, they're still penny stocks, you know. So um, OTC, pink slip stocks, in other words, stocks that hasn't made it on the exchange yet. Uh, so... It's kind of good to see some of it pay off. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go into detail, but, you know, kind of hit perfect timing. Uh, so that way I don't, you know, didn't have to take out money from my portfolios to do some things that I wanted to do. So, you know, my whole objective by doing these pages and stuff, and, you know, I always say, hey, I don't care about followers, and it's evident I only have, like, 60 followers on my YouTube, on my main uh, YouTube channel. I have uh, three YouTube channels, but the main one only have like 60 followers, maybe 70 followers. So it's, it's obvious that, you know, I don't have a lot of followers. But I also said that when I started the channel that I would get organic followers or that I want organic followers. And what I mean by organic is, you know, people that truly have a, uh, a great interest in some of the things that I speak about, whether it be, you know, best life, self, wealth, health, or truth, any one of those four topics to help better us or better you, you know, as a whole. So it's kind of, you know, redundant, but I'll say it again. And that is, is you know, this channel's not aimed for viewers or followers. It's aimed to show the small guy something that nobody else is willing to show the small guy. When I mean small by small guy, I mean guy that's on welfare, or lady, of course, that's on welfare, Section 8, housing, you know, public assistance, income-based housing, food stamps, you know, um, disability, you know, to the person that may even be on drugs, like literally, the person that's on drugs, on a fixed income, literally, to the old man who probably don't even have 10 years left who's on retirement, to show them what, you know, you know, introduce to them a thing that was taboo before. And that is thinking that you can be poor, but still grow, you know, financial wealth. You know, and even more important than financial wealth, time wealth. And even more important than your own selfish financial and time wealth, exponentially, you know, growing generational wealth. And that was the whole purpose, you know, of this, trying to be as most unselfish as I possibly can after my mom dying, while also at the same time proving to my mom that I can take care of myself. So it's almost like an oxymoron. I have to prove to her that I, have to, I can take care of myself but at the same time not be selfish enough to 
fight for, you know, generational wealth. And it would take a person's mindset to get to the point of generational wealth before they would even get to a point of investing because investing is holding out on yourself for it to grow. And if your ass die, then you're obviously not going to enjoy the growth. So you have to have a certain unselfish mindset to get into investing for exponential growth and for, you know, changing your bloodline and the curses that have been put on your bloodline and all, at least financially. So um, the main thing that I said, I want to say by saying what I just said is the objective is to show a person how you could take less than $100 and change your life, you know, and change other people's lives, you know. I can't think of a better example than literally me putting $46 and some change into uh, uh, one asset when I have, let's say, more than 50 other assets in that portfolio, and then maybe 100 assets in another portfolio, and then whatever amount of assets I got in the other portfolios that I have, but just to see one asset valued at just $46 go from literally last place on my list, meaning loss-wise, has lost more than any of my other stocks, and then in one night it just shoot up to literally 4,000% plus growth, 4,100 and nine percent growth. That's that's like for every dollar you put in there, you just got you know four thousand percent growth on that dollar. So, um, it's kind of rare, but it's it's possible, and the proof is right here. And, you know, not everybody has thousands, you know, ten thousand dollars that they can you know throw into a stock. And not everyone has the amount that that share price is worth for that stock. But nowadays, it's a little easier to buy partial shares and things like that. And it makes it a little easier versus, you know, how it used to be when you had to get a broker and all in the past. It makes it a little easier these days for, let's say, literally a personal welfare or personal, you know, food stamps or, 